Word on the street is that it takes a real man to admit when he is wrong. Well, this guy was dead wrong. Hey everyone, my name is Sam and welcome back to Samcraft. That's right, I was wrong. Let it soak in for a second. Yeah, you're shocked, aren't you? No, nobody's shocked. In today's video, I'm going to be continuing working on building my new workshop. If you've not seen the previous videos, there's a link to the full playlist down below. That link will get you caught up from beginning to now. And if you're here from the future, we'll take you from here to the end of the build. In today's video, I'm going to be doing a little bit of backpedaling and admitting that I was wrong, dead wrong, when I installed the siding. But for that, we got to go out there to the new property and the new workshop, and I'll show you guys what's going on. Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to the next part of the workshop build. In today's video, I'm going to be doing a little bit of backpedaling and fixing my issues or my problems with the siding installation. In the previous video where we installed the siding on the workshop, I forgot this. What is this, you may be asking? This is what's known as Z-flashing. This is a fantastical little galvanized piece of metal bent in a certain special way to allow you to not just have your whole structure rot out from the siding whenever you attach your siding and have flush joints, such as on the wall where the wall siding and the gable siding meet. I forgot to do this in my last video. Many people pointed that out, some in a good way, most in a arrogant way, but hey, that's people. I totally blanked out on the other video. I should have done this, I should have bought it. I don't know why, but it never crossed my mind. I knew about it. I've known about Z-flashing, but I don't know. I guess I had tunnel vision on the project. I just wanted to get it covered. We were fighting the weather, and now it's coming back to bite me a little bit. So my hopes are I can use my pry bar and probably my little five pound sledgehammer, knock out the siding from the inside on the bottom. Hopefully I can just kick it out enough to fit this in place and then nail it all back together. That's my hope, but I really won't know if that's gonna work or not until I get up there and start beating the devil out of it. <laughs> so let's go ahead and climb up there and fix my mistake. Let that be a lesson to anyone out there. Please do not forget your Z flashing. Seven and a half minutes just to pop the bottom edge of one panel off. I have six total to do, three here, three there. So um, by the power of math, probably about an hour's worth of work by the time I move stuff around like the shelf, there's the plywood and stuff over there. So ugh. I've not been outside to check yet, but I don't believe I've destroyed the siding either, which is good. If I have, I do have, I think, three or four extra sheets of T111 so I can recut these pieces if I have to. I really don't want to, but at least I have those in the event something goes bad. So here we go. Let's, uh, let's just get it knocked out, literally get it knocked out, and then we can move on to installing the Z flashing and put it all back together. Have I said yet that I regret not doing this when I did the siding? 
That's a little bit close. Zoop. Oh wow, now we got plenty of room. All right, that one wall's done. Now I'm going to flip flop, squiggly squat, do the wall behind you guys. But before I get to do that, I've got to move the panel, extra panels of, of panel, wood, whatever, you'll see it. Move it and then rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. Whoops, there we go. <laughs> It's about the consistency of Elmer's glue. Even though he kept it in the camper overnight and it didn't freeze and everything, it's still a little glebby. Don't get your pants. I know. I did uh, not remember to bring any painting clothes. So, whenever I start painting, there's a good chance I'm gonna put on some pajama pants. <laughs> Those are cheaper. You guys can come back with me now. I'm ready to go ahead and start attaching the Z flashing and putting back the siding that I've really messed up. Um, I have to really take close attention and see if I need to actually replace the entire pieces or if the damage that's happened, um, this side's a lot worse than that one. But we'll see on this one. If there's a really, really bad damage, I'll just have to cut new pieces. But let's go ahead and go over there and change the scenery to some Z flashing. What I'm having to do is carefully go up there and pry off and make sure all of the nails are out of the way for me to put the Z flashing up behind that piece. Some of them are still in the siding, so that's easier to pop out from the outside. However, some of them pulled all the way through the siding, so I've got to kind of pry the siding off, get my other crowbar, pull the nail out, and kind of wiggle it out. So that's what I'm going to continue doing, working all the way across this line, pulling the nails out to prepare it to have the flashing installed. We're on the back side of the workshop now, and I've got to trim the Z flashing. As you can see, it is a little bit bent. I had to bend over this a little bit on both ends so that it would actually fit in the minivan. It's all right, we've got plenty to work with. I bought three pieces for this. These are 10 feet long, and I've only got 24 foot of lengths to actually use it for. So I was okay with that rather than try and tie this flimsy stuff on the roof. So to cut this, uh, normally you would have metal snips or something like that. I don't have anything out here. I thought I didn't have anything at all until I remembered I have this thing. It is uh, metal shears that attach to a cordless drill or an impact driver and it works great. So we'll go ahead and take this, cut my square edge and we'll go ahead and start working on this side of the shop.
not too bad. This is really great for metal roofing. Really, really good for metal roofing. Um, and also pretty good for trim too. I've got this side of the workshop siding pried off and I have the Z flashing started. If you'll notice, I had some blowout on that corner down there. I could take that whole piece down and recut it all new, but I've got some weatherproof outdoor wood glue and I know when I glue that all back together, it's gonna to be just as strong, if not stronger, than a replacement piece would be. I'm not worried about any kind of water getting in it and it's gonna be perfectly fine. So I'm gonna glue that back whenever I get to that point. But otherwise, next step is shimmying or putting the Z flashing into place. Doing that Z flashing was an entire pain in the patootie. No two ways around it. That was an absolute nightmare. <laughs> I, um, I don't know if I wish that I had done it or just ignored it, but you guys know the truth behind that. That is that it had to be done. Uh, it really kind of busted up my siding more than I ever really wanted. Nothing was broken or messed up too bad to one, not be repaired, or two, still not have the flashing behind it, cover everything and keep it weather tight. I think what I am gonna do though, even though I have the flashing, I'm gonna put a piece of trim across this thing eventually just to keep any kind of bugs or carpenter bees or anything from deciding that my new workshop is also a cool place to live as well. That is just gonna be for aesthetics and bug proofness. It's not gonna be considered a weather barrier necessarily. That Z flashing is really doing the critical job but I think it's really gonna help in the end to make it so much nicer and again, keep the bugs out of the shop. Well, that is it. We are out of paint. Our five gallons of exterior paint went around the building once completely and almost twice. This wall was our last second coat, but it also only went around as far as painting the joints one side, maybe, maybe one and a half sides. So we got to get more paint, which is a bummer because we really thought the five gallons would have covered it, but not good enough that t111 is really really thirsty being raw wood not even primered it really drinks the paint up so we're going to, have to at least get another five gallons of paint hopefully that will do the job though and honestly we're also thinking about getting a sprayer i mean as weird as it sounds to get one now um painting it by hand is kind of no fun <laughs> Ugh. All right, we have the paint sprayer loaded up and truth be told, I've kind of played with it and got it, okay, dialed in as good as I can say it's dialed in. So this is perfect for this kind of application where we've got to paint all the cracks or the, I guess, recess joint, whatever, they're cracks of the T111 siding. I've got it set to the circle spray pattern and that seems to be doing the best. Either way, this sure beats the heck out of brushing it by hand. So I'll let Angel get over here behind my shoulder hopefully out of the danger zone for spray. And you guys can kind of see up close how well it works on this little side part right here.
Much nicer. Definitely much nicer. Well, as much of a pain it was to do the Z flashing and as horrible of a nightmare it was, I'm glad that I took the time and did it. We all know that that was the proper thing to do and it's just forever going to be the visual reminder that ha, that was the time that you didn't remember. Unless I decided to cover up with some trim. Ah, the power of trim. It's Carpenter's best friend. Outside of the Z flashing, the paint job was, I mean, it was okay. It's painting. That workshop took about seven gallons worth of exterior grade paint. And honestly, looking at it, it looks like it could take another seven gallons. But uh, I want to call it quits at the seven. <laughs> it's good enough. It is protected. The goal of the whole paint job was obviously to paint it so it looks all nice and pretty. But more so to protect that raw T111 wood siding. The workshop exterior has about three coats of the exterior paint and it's fine for now. Obviously with a wood building and a painted building, there's going to be maintenance, there's going to be upkeep, but that's okay. As far as what's coming up next on the video progress of this workshop build, I need to go ahead and start putting some trim on and then I'm going to be installing the roofing. The roofing that I'm going to be doing on the new workshop is one that requires that you have the trim on your gables and your fascia or soffits, fascia board, fascia trim, that board. You have to have all that installed before you put the roofing on. So that's why we're kind of going around it as, you know, paint the exterior, do the trim, paint the trim, and then the roof. It all makes sense as it kind of pans out. If you guys have any questions or comments about this video or anything in general, the progression of the workshop build, or perhaps the progression of the deconstruction of the workshop that you see that I'm in right now, feel free to leave me a comment down below. Otherwise, take care, and I'll see you guys next time in the workshop.